Hi everybody, so I'm very excited about this next lesson for Sonic Pi. Uh, we are going to explore a concept called the live loop. Uh, some of you through playing around, searching through examples in the help or online have probably seen this before and maybe have used it in some of your code. Uh, so today I'm just gonna talk a little bit in detail about it. Uh, there are many things that live loops are helpful for. What we're gonna look at today is how we can use multiple sounds playing at the same time. So some of you, for example, when we looked at samples, you submitted projects where you were making drum beats, which was great to see. So this is a, a way we can make drum beats in a slightly different way instead of having to kind of write out everything that happens. Uh, and there's a bunch of other stuff we can do with it too that we'll start to explore more. So the live loop is gonna kind of be now the foundation of a lot of the code that we write. So let's get right into it. So a live loop, uh, if you've ever worked with like GarageBand or another kind of digital audio workspace, um, you'll know that certain sounds are layered by tracks. So you might have a track for the drums. And even within that, you might have a track for the kick drum and then a track for the snare drum. Then you have a track for the hi-hat and then you would have a track for the bass and then a track for the guitar and then a track for the vocals. So it's sort of these layers of different sounds that all play together. And for most of us in Sonic Pi, we haven't been able to have a lot of sounds play at the same time unless we write them all one after another without putting sleeps in between. So live loops is going to change that. It's basically going to give us these options to make tracks in our code so that everything can play along at the same time. Um, so here's how it works. We're going to write live underscore loop to start out. Now the thing about a live loop is it's think of it as like a person in your band. So every band, if you have a bunch of musicians, they're all going to be playing together, each one with their own responsibility, but everyone's going to have a name, a way that we refer to that person, whether it's this is the bassist or the drummer or this uh, person's name is Steve or Jamal or Mary or Cynthia. Some of uh, everyone's going to have their own name. So live loops need a name. OK, and this is like making a variable. You can call it whatever you want. Don't start it with a number. Don't start it with a capital letter. OK, um, so I am going to do a colon here and I'm going to call this kick. OK, I'm going to give it a name that makes sense for what I want it to do. All right. Now, a live loop is a block of code. And what that means is it needs to have a do. And we know that if we have a do, we need an end. All right, so this is very important to make sure you know. One, that the live loop has a name, and that name always starts with a colon, and then that it has a do and an end. And all the code that goes inside of that do and end is going to be part of our loop. And keep in mind the name, loop, is exactly what it's going to do. All right, so I'm going to make a sample. Okay, a sample, and I'm going to use a kick drum sample that I know is called BD underscore house. Okay. Now, one thing I will show you right off the bat, I'm going to run this code and I'm going to get an error message. It'll play once, but it said loop did not sleep or sync. Okay. So a live loop has to sleep. Okay. You can't just have a sample in there without sleep. So I'm going to write sleep one and I'm going to run it again. So now I have this kick drum playing over and over and over. And this is a loop, so it's just going to go. This is never going to stop unless I press the stop button now. All right. So this is already different than the code we've been writing. OK, so there we have it. I am going to make my BPM a bit faster here, maybe like 110. All right. so. There you have, okay, this is just a basic live loop. I have a sample, I gave my live loop a name, I have my do and I end, so right off the bat, uh, I have something going on. Now I could write a whole bunch of more code in here and have sort of a pattern that repeats, but I'm gonna keep it very simple. So like I said, we're gonna kind of break this down into different tracks. So I'm gonna now go down, and the point we're trying to have multiple sounds here, so I'm gonna make another live loop. Okay, now I can't give it the same name as this live loop, so I'm going to call it something different. I'm going to call this one hats. Okay, and then I have a do and I have an end. So I'm going to use another sample here that, and I'm going to use, I believe, is the drum cymbal close. So this is like a hi hat sound. Okay, now I will do sleep for one. Okay, so there you have now two sounds playing at the same time. All right, uh, I'm going to make a quick adjustment here. I'm going to make this a little bit quieter. 
All right, so there we have that. Now, when building specifically drum beats, but any time you're working with multiple live loops, uh, you can change the sleeps and stuff like that. But if you want your code to line up and sound correct, for lack of a better word, like everything fits together nicely and all the rhythms work together, you're gonna wanna make sleep values in each one that equally divide into one another, okay? So for example, I'm gonna have one and I'm gonna have 0 0.5. Uh, so this is gonna be playing twice uh, as many notes every beat, but they're gonna line up uh, equally. Okay, so that's a nice even break up of the cymbal and the house. Just to show you how that might not work, I'm just gonna give a very like weird random number here. So you can hear they just don't sound like they match up. They don't line up quite right, okay? And I'm not saying that's incorrect. Uh, it's just gonna sound weird. If that's what you're going for, then by all means go for it. But to make them line up evenly and give it a bit more of a musical quality that we're used to hearing. Okay, that is the way we want to do it. All right, so I can also incorporate um, sort of synthesizers into my live loop. So live loops are not just for samples. I can use synths as well. So I'm going to have maybe a bass, okay? Again, I'm just giving them these names. I could call them whatever I want, but I'm going to keep them consistent. So in this case, I'm going to have play instead of sample because I'm going to play synth notes here. All right, and maybe I'll do like play 50, and then I'm going to sleep for two. So let's hear this. Okay. All right, so now what I could do is maybe I want another note there. So maybe I'll do 57 and I'll sleep for two again. So this one's gonna play two notes as I go. Okay, so now you can start to see the potential of where this is all going to go, all right? So one last thing I'm gonna show you uh, is how we can now start to incorporate rings into what we are doing. So if I wanna have like a bunch of different notes playing, instead of me writing play, sleep, play, sleep, I could just make a, a ring of notes and that will just constantly cycle through. Now, Definitely use a ring and not an array, especially if you're gonna be using dot tick because the ring will just constantly come back around again, all right? So I'm gonna use this one for example first. So I'm gonna make a ring at 50 and then 57 and I'll just add a few more, 53 and then maybe 60 here. And then again, I have to do dot tick or else it's just gonna play them all at once. So let's hear what that's and maybe I'll make this amp up a little bit just to make sure it comes through. And this is another thing as we kind of change like one track maybe louder or softer, we can kind of find the balance as we go. So here we go. Okay, so now I have this repeated pattern going on here and my hi-hat here and my bass here, okay? So this is starting to take shape. And there's so much more I could do with it. I'm just gonna show you one more thing, okay? So, so let's say I want two samples to kind of go back and forth or multiple samples to go back and forth. Now this we was thrown out as an option in the, in the last lesson and some of you tried it and some of you maybe weren't sure how to do it. So I'm gonna show you a bit more definitively how to do it now. So with sample to play a ring of samples, I use sample, I don't use play. Uh, so I make my ring and then instead of using notes, I'm just gonna put in the names of samples. Now, one thing about this is I don't get the drop down menu anymore. So if you want like help to remember, you can always go to the samples here. I'm gonna look for snare drums and then it gives me the names of the samples. So if you can't remember them, you can always just refer to it in the sample help part. So I'm gonna use this uh, SN zone. Okay, and now here I'm just gonna do dot tick. So now it's gonna alternate between this sample and this sample. Okay, 
so there you have it the live loop and this is just the beginning there's so many different things now we can start doing with these live loops but the basic idea here is that we have multiple sounds that are all playing together at the same time we have a loop so it goes over and over and over again i can use amp to sort of change the volume of each live loop that i have i can use rings to sort of create patterns and and cycle through stuff without having to write a lot of code, okay? So for this assignment, um, I've prepared this little reference sheet. So this kind of goes over all the stuff that I talked about. Um, so how the live loop works, the syntax, playing multiple loops together, using sleep values that divide equally to make them line up better, and then patterns using samples or rings. This one even I threw in a different synth, so you can definitely play around with that. For this assignment, the checklist here of level one, two, three, and four is basically what we just covered. So just making a live loop that works, using two or more live loops at once, using the sleep values that equally divide to line up the beats, using samples and synth sounds, so mixing both of those and then using rings to play multiple samples or synths at the same time, all right? So uh, once you got your code, you know, you copy and paste it, put it in the submission document. Please make sure you are hitting everything in these checklists uh, and that you at the very least are submitting code that has live loops in it. Um, and that is it. If you have any questions, let me know. But that is all we have for today. I can't wait to see what you guys start doing now with this concept of live loops.